friends. Today I'm playing with this little bird. So when I'm sitting outside, I see this little bird come and um, he's so cute. I'm gonna use a little bit more vibrant colors, um, but I wanted to just do this on camera for you so you could maybe pick up some of my techniques I use. I have a variety of brushes here I've got. Um, I'm gonna be working a lot with Wet and Wet. So I wanted this uh, mop brush. This is from Zen Art again. I use a number of her brushes. I, I kind of like her company. It's woman founder, she's a mommy, so I just like her. So this is a good little brush. They're quite soft, so they hold a lot of water and give me that opportunity to work wet and wet. Uh, let me see. Do I have my picture of my birdie I shared? Oh, here it is. There it is. So I'm going to be doing something similar to this, which is very washy um, and interesting. You can see the blue there. It's a little bit grainy, but that's pretty typical of blue. And then the other brushes I have here are, of course, my eight round um, Velvet Touch, which you know is my favorite. I've got, I don't know if I'll use this one. That's the um, six round from Princeton. And I have this little tiny one. Uh, this is also Zen Art, but it's got a really tiny, tiny point. Just to maybe do some of the little feathers and little fluffies coming out here at the bottom of his leg. So um, that's kind of going to be my approach. Okay, um, let's see. I am using my Artisto pads, as you know, my favorite. I just... I'm getting so many of you that are enjoying these books. They come in a three pack. I go through tons of them. This one I don't have labeled because I think it's rather new, but I will normally write on there, which I probably should do right now. And so this one is kind of spring 2024. And that way I can reference back to them. And they've just got a wonderful texture. They are not 100% cotton, but I think they're fabulous. And I have tried so many papers. If you don't need um, the supplies, um, you can just fast forward and we can just go ahead and jump into it. This also is perforated, so you can tear these out if you wanna gift give them, which I do quite often. Um, but I do like to keep these all. I have tons of these and I just flip through them if I'm looking for some inspiration or a color chart I remember doing. So those are the Artisto pads. They are 140 pound cold pressed. And then I'm using, I can't afford guys to uh, paint with my Winsor Newtons daily for the amount of painting I'm doing. So I use this My Lang palette, which I just love. Creamy, vibrant. They can also be transparent and look at the beautiful colors. I mean, there's every color here for a lazy painter like me. All right, the other thing really important is make sure you have your wash and your rinse water. So you're just, when you use your brush, you're just washing it off and I slide it on the side just to make sure that the water is clear. And then I give it a good rinse. Watercolors are so transparent. You definitely don't want to go from like using bright red and then go to your yellow. And there's still some of that in your brush because it'll, well, red and yellow would make orange. But if you had contrasting colors, which are colors opposite on the color wheel, that would turn muddy. And I get a lot of um, questions about why are my colors turning muddy? That could be one, you're not rinsing your brush well enough. So just a little tip there. All right, what I'm gonna start first is just working on his little back here. And I'm going to make him blue, just like the first one I did here. I actually feel like I wanna take this out for reference. So these are very easy to, remove you just <laughs> I say it's easy and now watch I'm gonna have a problem there we go and let's just remove this it usually comes out pretty cleanly and this paper just has the most beautiful texture so I take these out quite often because um, a lot of times I'm gifting them or I'm framing them for myself. So I just do that. And then I'm just gonna prop this up here so I have something to kind of refer to. All right, 
The colors I'm going to be using are going to be in the My Lane palette. I'm going to be using, this is the little swatch sheet they give you, uh, probably Sienna, which I love. It has a little bit of that orangey color, maybe some yellow Sienna, burnt Sienna, maybe a tiny bit of black, but definitely Payne's Gray. And then I'm going to go for the vibrant blue, that fresh blue they, they talk about, or maybe even Prussian blue. So those will be my colors. I'll just swatch them really quick here for you because that's typically what I do so I can see. So there is that very light brown, which is kind of in his body here. And then that one's, I believe, the yellow. I'm sorry, the um, yeah yellow sienna. And then this is going to be the sienna. Love that color. I think it's so pretty with the vibrant uh, blue. And then this is the, actually this is cobalt blue, I believe. No, I'm sorry, turkey blue. It's like an ultramarine if you're using your Windsor Newtons. And let's see, what other colors should we get in there? I might, I'm just gonna swatch this. I don't know if I'll use it, but this is the light sky blue. It might be kind of fun to put in there. And then the last color, let's see. We'll, we'll just swatch our Payne's Gray because I just think that goes so beautifully with the other colors. And maybe a burned brown. I love the burned brown, which to me reminds me kind of of a Van Dyke brown. So in the browns, it's quite dark. And many times when I do these swatches, I'll just pull it out a little bit because you can see how light it gets. And I really try many times to use all my values of the colors, meaning I'm going from the darkest value, which is 80% pigment, 20% water, to a mid value, which is 50-50. And then the lightest value for me is typically 20% pigment, 80% water. And that creates that beautiful depth and interest as well in your paintings. So normally I would write down the colors, but I kind of know what they are, so I won't do that. And then we're gonna be working very wet and wet. Actually, I think I might as well go ahead and take this one out. I usually leave most of my paintings in these books. If I'm going to paint something, um, you know, that I want to gift or I know I'm going to be removing, especially if it's wet and wet, a lot of times I will just use my Meaden um, pad. Okay, let's see here, guys. I'm trying to be really careful. I don't want to rip this. Usually comes out pretty easily. Okay. So there we go. All right. I could tape it down, but not going to. Um, and I'm going to start with, let's see. Let's start with some of that blue. So this is the blue. I've got a little bit of, actually, I think that Payne's, Payne's uh, gray in there. And some of the ultramarine oh i think i called this turkey i might have called that turkey blue it's actually ultramarine which is the same in winter newton and i've got a little bit more paint on my brush than i normally have you get because i am working very very um wet in a very wet fashion i should have washed my palette so i have a little bit more room okay so I dip my brush and then I'm just gonna tap it or scrape it to get too much excess and I'm gonna start going in here. I'll work around his head like this. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and going to start washing that. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and maybe just tap it off a tiny bit but I wanna keep quite a bit of water on there and I'll go in not too much, I don't wanna puddle here. And start pulling that down. And with this bird, I actually want some 
blooms and blossoms. Now I'm going to go in here with that light brown and just start adding that in. And now I'll go in, wash my brush, tap it off a bit. And working pretty wet because I want these to really blend together. Now what I'm doing right there is just tapping in some water. And I'm going to keep going here. Just adding this in. And now some water, tap off my brush. Clean my brush again, just a little bit of water. And giving a light wash over the back of my bird and these feathers. Maybe just tapping in a bit with that brown. There we go. And some of these feathers on the back end here. So again, I'm working pretty wet here. Wetter than I normally tell you. I haven't got petals, but it's definitely wetter. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go into the front here with some brown and I'm just gonna let that set a little bit. I might add, let's take that darker brown, maybe some of that. And we can even tap in here. But I want that to really spread. So I'm going into that with some water drops and get it to really move around like that. Okay, I'm going to go into his belly here with that lighter brown and just start doing the same thing. Pretty wet here. Not puddles, but definitely wet. And then I will go into that with a wet brush. There we go. I wanna save a little bit of white space. I think what I'll do right here is go in with some blue there, just around his eye like that. There we go. Just kind of creating that beautiful blend. And then I'm going to add water to these because I really want this to be rather washy. And almost like a model, modeled look. I think that's the word for it. And I like going in and creating these little blooms and such. I think that's really pretty. Now, before this dries too much, I'll go in and lay down some of that darker brown and let it really blend in there. I might even go in with a little bit more of that damp because I don't want any lines. I want it to just look all blended. I'm gonna go back into his head. And tap in some more of that blue. Kind of create his little beak there. And maybe tapping in just a bit here and there with that blue and get it to really blend. So I'm intentionally, this is when those blooms or cauliflowers, whatever you call them, I think are a good thing. 
And I know my, my little guy, he's a little bit chubby. That's okay. So am I. So, okay, let's go in now. And I'm going to take that lighter brown, pretty watery, and I'm just going to go in down here. Create his little legs. There we go. And again, adding lots of water, getting this to really spread. Maybe adding in some dark to his legs. Like that. I really like this modeled look. And to get that, I'm having to add quite a bit of water. So I like that. Let's go in here and maybe just do a tiny bit under this wing, just to make it look a little bit shadowy. And then I want to add water to that so I get a nice blend. There we go. I'm just dabbing some water here and there to create those blooms intentionally. I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit and that bloom will be much better. Now I'm gonna grab my tiny brush. This is when that Zen Art, it's a four round brush and I'm gonna get it wet, but kind of pull it into a point here. And let's just, now hopefully you wanna make sure this is dry. I'm going to do his little eye. And as this dries, I'll go in and add more, but I don't want to touch into that wet paint. So I'm being kind of careful. There we go. I'm going to grab that Payne's gray, which is quite dark. And I'm just going to touch in a little bit around his eye. Just to create a little bit of interest. There we go. Like that. Now you could use a bright blue on some of this and that would be just fine. Kind of flicking and at the same time, I don't wanna to get too crazy with that. Maybe a little bit of that brown in there. Just going to soften that a bit with some water. There you go. And then letting this dry just a bit. I might even lighten some of this. There we go. Kind of wasn't completely happy with that, so I wanted to do a tiny bit more. Pick up some more of that dark blue. There we go. And maybe just a little line here. So I'm, this is such a perfect example of 
really working with those blooms, which can be just wonderful. And really beautiful. I mean, it just gives this little fluffy look, doesn't it? Okay. Just go in and maybe do a tiny bit more with his eye. His eye got a little bit bigger than I really wanted. That's okay. It's a bird, right? Birds aren't perfect either. And then maybe just a tad of that blue down in here. And dropping some water. So again, that modeled look, which I'm gonna do right here as well. Okay. I'm gonna work on his beak now. Now, the, the reference picture I had, he had just the tiniest, and being careful not to go in here if that is wet. He had just a tiny bit of yellow, but it really was mostly um, like a brown, a black. So that's what I'm going to use. And you really could use the tiniest, tiny brush here. And then softening those edges. And there you go. I'm gonna go into that Payne's Gray again. And just add in a little bit more Just kind of dabbing here. I added in the tiniest touch of black there. There we go. Now on the, the painting that I shared with you, I really, I worked on it for a while, just playing with it and kind of stepping back and going back into it. So I'm just going to kind of move that around. Don't want his head to be too dark. Maybe something like that. Okay, I mean, I think I'm basically done. I don't want to overwork this too much. Feel like I could set, oh, I know what else I was going to do. Now I'm gonna go into that and just softening those edges. Like that. Um, Oh, the other thing was it had, he had these little tiny, tiny feathers sticking out. So just using a very, very light touch. And kind of flicking some little feathers here. I love putting those subtle little details in there that you almost don't notice and then all of a sudden you notice, you're like, oh, I think there's some little feathers there. And I love that, that kind of catch your eye afterwards. I'm just playing with some of these browns. that and really letting it kind of blend in there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I always explain this. I'm not saying, oh my gosh, look at how wonderful I paint. It's more like, just look at what watercolors do, do, does do. It's just like magic to me, truly. 
I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna give this just a quick shot with my dryer. My heat gun, you can use a regular dryer if you like. And then I can go in with some water and create any places where I feel there's a little bit of, it's just too hard edged for me. And I can go in and get that wet and let it spread. So it's creating these really nice blends and modeled look that you get. Now, one thing I will do when this dries is I'm going to go in and just work on his eye a little bit. Let's see if I can go in there now. Let me try this black pen. I used all um, watercolors in that, but I'm going to try And I just outlined his eye a tiny bit. And then I'm actually even going to, because I feel like I put too much black in his eye. Want a little bit. So this is this Copic Opaque White, but you know, I, I'll list this. It's a wonderful product, but you could use any white that you have. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. So there we go. So most of this was really done with that dropping water in there and letting it kind of blend and do fun things. I'm gonna add in a tiny bit darker blue in the bottom here. like that, and because I want that to move even more, I'm gonna drop in water to it and really get it to move around like that. I can even tilt my paper, you know, whatever you would like to do there. And I think I'm about done. I hope that was fun for you. Um, that dropping water in is a beautiful effect for things like this. And I'm tilting my paper and just kind of letting the watercolor do its thing. It almost paints for me. So I hope it was fun and let me know any of your feedback. I could always go in here and just add in a tiny, like just some little brush strokes for little feathers. But I feel like really, I don't wanna to do too much of that. So look what I'm doing even. I'm going in and giving that a wash, but it did go in and just darken up his head a tiny bit. Okay, I hope that was fun for you. I love doing these. I think this would be really pretty in a um, red bird, my gosh, that would be gorgeous with some reds and yellows and maybe a little bit of blue, um, be really fun. All right, everybody, I think that's good. You could even add in that background to this, just a little like here, maybe a little there, and I think that would be fun too. All right, happy painting, everybody, enjoy. All right, so I'm going to add in just a tiny bit of background here. There we go. Just to make this kind of fun and interesting. Might add it out here. Now this is still wet, so I could actually just pull that out like that. Maybe add in some little splatters here.
something like that. So keeping it very minimalist, I think that looks really fun. And there you go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great day and happy painting. Always making sure that you're painting with joy and fun. And I think it really expresses in your paintings. Have fun, everyone.